The Bible says that Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. Now, I'm not sure if that cool of the day was the morning or the evening. I personally believe it happened to be both. Why not give God the best parts of your day? And so the morning and the evening, the cool of the day, those seem to be the best times to hang out with God. And this never got old because in a thousand years of walking with God, you couldn't scratch the surface on his goodness. You couldn't scratch the surface on how awesome he was. In a thousand years of spending time with God, you couldn't begin to comprehend how powerful he was, how righteous he was, how holy he was. You would hear stories of the angels. You would hear stories of what heaven is really like. All in this time, you would look forward every day. You would run to the location where you knew your God was gonna meet you a thousand years and I can't comprehend how much he loves me. But one day in between walks, we know what happened. They ate of this fruit. They picked from the tree that they weren't supposed to pick from. And then the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Here's the other thing about death. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And so death has an impeccable record. Death does not miss an appointment. Death is always on time, right on time. You have an appointment to die. I don't know if you know that, but you have an appointment to die and it doesn't matter who your mom and dad are. It doesn't matter what side of the country you were born in. It does not matter what religion you are, what religion you're not, whether you believe or you don't believe, we all are dying right now. And the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And so Adam and Eve, they had taken of the fruit. They had done what they were not supposed to do. And now their walks in the cool of the garden no longer seem very cool no longer seem very refreshing matter of fact god shows up and he says what have you done and when he realizes what they've done when they admit to what they've done and they're done pointing the blame they're no longer walking in the cool of the garden with their god but instead they're walking among tombstones they are walking for the rest of their lives with reminders that this world is corrupt. They're walking for the rest of their lives among a boneyard, a worldwide boneyard. It would happen to their son, Abel. Their son, Abel, would precede them in death. And as the population grew, crime grew, so did the number of deaths on this earth. And remember, I said, we weren't equipped for this. We weren't designed to experience this, and that's why it stings so bad. But right now, the world is paying attention to the idea of death, hell, and the grave. The world is thinking about whose funeral is next. Will they be able to attend it? Will it be locked down? Will it be shut down? With over a million people worldwide experience this COVID-19. But COVID-19 coronavirus is not the biggest killer of man. You know what the biggest killer of man is? The biggest killer of man is our sin. And everybody has an appointment. If you come to this earth through the womb of a woman, which is all of us, you are not exempt. The son of God himself, born of a virgin, comes through the womb of a woman and he too has an appointment with death. He too will be put in a tomb. He too will have to experience what it's like to sleep and feel the sting of something he wasn't designed to do. And when Adam and Eve, when Cain, when Abraham, when Methuselah, when David, when Solomon, when Melchizedek, when Samuel, when Saul, when Rahab, when Mary, when Joseph, when Jacob, when Isaac, any of them walked the earth, they would see the tombstones, they would see the caverns where they buried their loved ones. And what it all had in common is it was full of potential dreams that would never come to pass. Destinies that would never be completely fulfilled because somebody's appointment came up. And the thing about death is he doesn't tell you when your appointment is. He just shows up and demands it. Your appointment 
can be when you're 120 years old. Your appointment can be when you're 12. Your appointment can be long after you graduate, but it can also be before you graduate. Here's what we do know, that the wages of sin is death. But then the Bible doesn't even leave us alone there. Not only does it say that the wages of sin is death, not, does it, not only does it promise that it's appointed unto man once to die, but then the Bible also says after this comes a judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. What do you mean the judgment? The judgment where we will stand before God and we will answer for the life that we lived on this earth. We will have to give an account of one, did we make Jesus our Lord and Savior? And if we did make him our Lord and Savior, what did we do with the time, the talent, and the treasure that he gave us? Before we climbed into one of these holes, before our families let us down into the ground, before we escape this corruptible flesh and we appear before our God, what did you do with the time that he gave you? Did you chase your goals? Did you chase your dreams? Did you do everything you could to get into your, to the school of your dreams? Did you do everything you could to make the team? Did you do everything you could to get the most likes, to be the most popular? What did you do with the time that God gave you from the time you were born to the time you accepted him as your savior? And then from the time you accepted him as your savior to the time you end up in one of these holes in the ground or end up in somebody's jar on, on a fireplace. What did you do with that? Because it's appointed once to get here. And then after you get here, it's appointed to be judged. And here's the thing about judgment is that is eternal. The death only happens once. That's why it only stings. But not only does death sting, but then it also says that the law, the rules have power over us. And the rules can say you did A, B and C, but you forgot D, E and F. You were not a good person. There is none good. There is none righteous, not one. And because there's none good, none righteous, all of sin to come short of the glory of God. We have to experience the separation of God and have to end up in this place behind me. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, even if just for a second, because when this corruptible flesh dies, there's coming a time where we will all stand before the judge and he's gonna challenge us. He's gonna say, I gave you this talent. I made you technically savvy. I made you funny. I made you athletic. I made you popular. I made you quiet. I made you brilliant. I gave you musical talent. I made you artistic. Before you got to your grave, what did you do with what I gave you? Did you take anything to the hole in the ground? Because when I walk through this graveyard, young people, when I walk through this graveyard, what I know that is buried in this ground what I know that exists among these bones, what I know that exists among these tombs is a lot of potential, a lot of talent, a lot of ideas went to the grave, a lot of hopes and dreams and motivations. A lot of these people go to the grave saying, someday I'm gonna serve God. Someday I'm gonna do something great for humanity. Someday I'm gonna make a difference. But right now I wanna have fun. Right now I'm trying to do me. Right now I wanna live my best life. Hmm. The problem with saying one day is you assume that your one day will come before your appointment comes. You see, Jesus died. Now he laid his life down willingly, but because he's a man, he also experienced the sting of death. He also experienced the penalty of sin and he experienced the judgment. The difference between what you are and what you could be is the difference on who experiences the judgment. See, if you let Jesus experience the judgment, the penalty of death, if you accepted the fact, you accept the fact that the cross was enough and that he went down into hell and he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, then you don't have to experience 
that same judgment. You don't have to experience this idea where you stand before God and you can't answer for the life that you lived. When Jesus becomes Lord of your life, when Jesus becomes number one and you don't just say a cute little prayer in church, when Jesus has really got your time, your talent, your treasure, when he becomes the sole focus of what you do, when you wake up in the cool of the day and you walk around in the cool of the evening, then you no longer have to experience that graveyard. No, you give your life to Jesus. You trust in his resurrection, which is what Easter's about, which is what Passion Week is about. And all of a sudden, you're not concerned with your appointment time. I'm not scared to die. I will die. But now I'm walking in the cool of the day again. Now I'm back in this place where my mornings and evenings are filled with God. Every day I think about what can I do to please my father today? What can I do to honor the savior who gave his life for me? What can I do to have that fellowship restored, to spend time with my father and find out about his love, his majesty, his power? What can I do to tap into the capacity to love and the ability to create so I once again look like the image of my father? You see now in the picture, there are no tombstones. There's only God's natural beauty in the end of this video. Because when we put our trust and our hope and our faith in Jesus, then we get to experience what I like to call a new kind of alive. Join me tomorrow as we finish up this discussion and this topic of what it now means to move from death to life. The wages of sin was death, but you've trusted in Jesus. So now you have a new kind of life. I love you. Come back tomorrow and let's finish up this Passion Week in triumphant victory. Love you.